102 to take to Road America is just one of the things where it's, it's an exciting time to be able to get, get the car and go up there again and, and drive it around the track. Road America was really the track where it won a lot and Road America is my home track. So there's a special relationship between the Cunningham uh, Nobles and Road America. Anytime I'm able to bring uh, 102 back to Road America, it's just kind of a, it's a special thing to be there in that car running around that track because it's the only road course that I know of that has not changed a configuration at all. So you're running the same circuit that uh, Eddie Crawford ran in that car uh, when he won those races up there. The connection is special. So the way these uh, BHL 101 and BHL 102, the two Cunningham uh, Novelty Lister team cars came to be with Cunningham, Jaguar was doing fantastic. Their C-Type was a world beater. The D-Type that followed was you know, had huge success in, in racing. And then tragedy struck uh, Jaguar when their Browns Lane facility where the competition cars were produced uh, burned to the ground. So the D-types were gone. The remaining D-type, you know, production was gone. They were out. They didn't have a race car for the next season. So um, Jaguar had close relationships with uh, Lister. So they knew Lister could build them a chassis and a body and Jaguar could still produce engines and gearboxes and rear ends. Um, so they went to Lister to partner up and Lister became the de facto, you know, factory competition side of Jaguar cars. I mean, it was really kind of a brilliant piece of engineering. The car is, is considerably lighter than a D-type, better chassis, you know, a DDO and rear suspension, four wheel disc brakes. Um, so it's, it's lighter, it's a better chassis, you know, and who better to put this new competition car into play than, than Cunningham, who was running, you know, what essentially was Jaguar's competition department in the US. They were like a factory team with all the sponsorship. They were the car to beat. And I believe in 1958, they won uh, 11 out of 16 races, I think was the record. Because unless they crashed into each other or both broke, pretty much nobody else had a chance. For 1958, 1959, uh, there wasn't much that could touch the Cunningham Lister Jaguars. They won the 1958 SCCA championship with the two cars. Um, 59 did, did extremely well. So to have a, a new race car that is that competitive for not just one year, but two years was really a feat. The car has tremendous brakes, it has tremendous power, and it's very forgiving, and the chassis is just perfect. The car is really just a sweetheart. You get in it, you turn the switches on, you hit the button, and it starts. It starts hot, it starts cold. The brakes are the original brakes, but they have modern linings in them. It has the best parts in it that you could possibly have. Uh, it's a bulletproof Jaguar XK engine. It's a bulletproof, you know, close ratio D-type four speed. It's just a fantastic road car, race car. Um, anything you want to do with it, it can do it. I think anybody interested uh, in purchasing BHL 102 upon inspection will find that not only is it completely sorted, it's ready to race, it's ready to tour. So it's your ticket into any kind of event uh, worldwide that you want to run. BHL 102 is a special car to me and, and uh, my time with it has been you know, something I wouldn't trade for anything. Best times I've had at a racetrack have been just talking to people about the car and, and using it and watching it in action because it's one of those things where there are a few cars that can deliver that kind of experience and that kind of history and that kind of feeling when you drive it that you're you're really in there and you're doing what the greats did in the same seat in the same car.